My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and it's now time to start blasting out some videos, so here we go. <laughs> I'm a fucking dickhead. Play the song thing. So figure it out. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to talk about, let's write on a bloody board, we haven't done this in a, time, in a while, ceramic engines, and I have to get my book out quickly because I've wrote some of these numbers down because I'm not remembering all these. Ceramic technology is not something that I know off the top of my head. If you ask me the weight of steel, the weight of steel is approximately 0 0.78 grams, uh, 7.83 grams per cubic centimetre because I deal with steel. When it comes to ceramics, I know bits and pieces, but it's not something I work with every day. So, um, yeah, we've got some numbers. And uh, why don't we use ceramics? When we're doing the rotary valve, but people have asked me about a lot of things in the past. It's a topic that's come up all the time. And then some bloke said, I would have said uh, 10 years ago that the, what we'd be doing today would be ceramic engines. A lot of people have asked when we have overheating issues, valves, blah, 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 why don't we use ceramics? So, what the fucking hell is a ceramic? So a ceramic is, uh, your basic examples are porcelain, um, glass, stuff like that. Um, basically a lot of carbides, nitrides, and all the rest of it. If it has that kind of word behind it, the generally ceramics. Um, so ceramics are non-metals. It uh, doesn't mean that they, these ceramic mixes can't have a metal component, um, but a ceramic is considered as a non-metal. It is pretty much non-conductive. Um, you can get around that, obviously, silicon, uh, when we dope it with other metals, it becomes a semiconductor, so it conducts only when you have a certain voltage and blah, 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 blah. Um, but generally, just pure basic ceramics as a building material. So why do we use ceramics? For the simple fact is, is their thermal and electrical conductivity, we'll forget the electrical bit for a time. Their thermal conductivity is usually quite shit. They are known as insulators compared to metals where you have copper, even aluminium, steel, magnesium, all the rest of it. Um, their thermal conductivity versus ceramics are, well, shockingly poor. This is why we use them as insulators. If you see them, I can't what they call them now, uh, the rib plates, the isolator plates they use on power lines to stop them arcing them dishes, the literally segmented dishes. Um, these are ceramic discs, so basically they stop arcing and jumping and fucking God knows what else they do. That's not my field of the grid, the national grid circuitry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, these things are used as uh, insulators. Obviously, uh, they're usually known as refractories as well, refractory... Um, they usually have high temp melting temperatures, stuff like that. Uh, most ceramics are in powder form, so basically you have to push them together. In a sense, like sintering, we're going to sinter in as well. Um, but the thing is, with your engine, is what you have is you have a uh, oven. Your cylinder with a piston in. Got drawings are fucking lacking these days, aren't they? Your cylinder <laughs> with a piston in. Um, this is a heat source, right? And with any kind of work that you try and do when you're trying to transfer energy from one state to another, you get waste heat. That is a thermodynamic um, law. <laughs> and uh, basically what happens is, is you need to conduct this waste heat. We can't get rid of the waste heat. Uh, you can't delete the waste heat. We can't annihilate the waste heat in a sense. What I mean is every time you do work or have an energy transfer from one thing to another, you have to have waste heat. It's just part of the process. Um, it's just the way nature is, it's the way this universe is. And so you have this this heat. So if you had um, very insulators, very, very poor conductors, then you're just gonna run away with your temperatures. It's just gonna get hotter and 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 hotter. And, hotter. and thermal expansion is still gonna be an issue. Things are gonna seize up and all the rest of it. The other thing is the hotter and hotter you get um, pre-ignition. So you imagine that, you know, we just say we, set the spark off at TDC. Yes, usually we do it before that, but just so you do it at TDC. As this engine gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, our gas, um, petrol, uh, fuel mix, our fresh charge that goes in, your piston would be halfway up the cylinder. It's so fucking hot in here, it automatically ignites. So your engine's just gonna go into thermal fucking meltdown and just explode itself. Um, the other thing is the mechanical properties of 
uh, ceramics. Ceramics are very, very hard, generally. Um, extremely hard, some of the hardest things. That's why I've got some of the hardness things written down here, uh, just to give you some examples. Um, and we'll talk about Rockwell C, we'll talk about moles, um, we'll talk about uh, Brunel hardening, Vickers and all the rest of it. Some of them are scratch testing, some of them are indentation, we'll do videos on that because they're quite cool. And you can actually do a crude version yourself-ish. Um, and we'll also talk about the difference between Rockwell um, A, B and C. I think it's A or they've got another name for it, I think it is A, B and C. It's Rockwell C I know very well. Um, but B's and A's are for plastics and thin films, off the top of my head. And uh, your Brunel and all the rest of it, they're all scratch testing. Uh, your Moles is a um, impact indenter, not an impact, an indenter test. But it's usually for minerals and ceramics and stuff like that because, well, we'll go into why when we look in the videos. Um, you might notice that you can't find Rockwell C numbers for certain things. That's because they're not high enough on the scale. Anything below 30 Rockwell hardness is generally by the, uh, by the um, engineering world is distrusted. Anything over 100 Rockwell is a generally distrusted as well. This is because the tools and attachments that you have um, are actually coming into play when we apply the forces to things. As in, when you go up to about 100 Rockwell or anywhere near that, um, the diamond tip the anvil that you're using is actually pushing into the steel block that it's attached to and not the actual material itself so um yeah you, you have problems there we'll, we'll go through that when we do the rockwell c stuff um but uh steel uh, ceramics are very uh, brittle and we're going to talk about this in the future but i showed you with this which is the copper it has a fucking hell no it doesn't anymore jesus <laughs> you fucking wimp i have bent the shit out of this so it's work hardened like a tree um the tobacco oh fuck me no i've work hardened the shit out of that that's not going anywhere it, it bent so easy the first time oh we've got that the annealed bit, you know, so copper is um, very ductile, uh, malleable, and um, you wouldn't believe the stresses that your engine goes under. So, with engines, uh, components like chrome rods, crankshafts, all the rest of it, um, you would not believe how much they stretch. So your rod gets pulled, um, pulled, under tensile stresses so you have a fixed point here and you have in this example it's not fixed obviously but as a relationship you have a fixed point here your piston is thrusting up and the highest accelerations are when you get to TDC and bottom dead center they're the highest accelerations for pistons and um, it's actually at TDC where your highest acceleration is acceleration mass equals a force so your rod is being pulled and they literally stretch and then on the downstroke when you get your power stroke they literally get compressed and on basically every time you go down to bottom dead center your rod is being compressed your rod is being bent and if you made this out of ceramics because they don't like to plastically deform or elastically deform um they basically just fucking shatter they brittle they just break they crack so Crankshafts and conrods are out of the, you know, out of the, um, uh, 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 not ideal. Uh, the ceramic, you know, got proper tongue, tongue, tongue twisted, can't fucking say it, it's getting hot. Um, so crankshafts and conrods uh, are a no-go when it comes to ceramics, they are too brittle. Um, and when you look at, so let's just say we've got something like steel, you look at a stress strain graph, you'll have a uh, load applied here. Uh, no, 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 sorry, load applied there. And basically, when you increase the load like this, this is the elastic region. So, your elastic region, very briefly, is when you bend something. So, if we. No, this is too soft. You bend something and it bends. 
here's a good example we're going to use a cable tie so this is elastic when you bend it and it flexes back to where it was that's elastic right even though this is a plastic <laughs> that's elastic deformation then it gets to a point here where it just goes off on a bit of a, a yeehaw this is called plastic deformation which is what this is plastic deformation is when you bend something and then it just retains that shape right so you bend it and then it retains that shape when you bend steels and we'll do more about this plastic and elastic deformation when you bend steels and they spring back that is the elastic region this here we call our yield point can't even spell yield looking at it the wrong way that's our yield point there when we go from this spring backy elastic deformation to this plastic bit basically it's, it's yielded uh, yielded to the force and then basically you reach a point here and then you start getting elongating necking and all the rest of it and then you get fracture so this is our ultimate tensile strength that's a one trick pony after that the material is fucked and this is our fracture that's where we actually crack and break when you look at the same kind of graph <laughs> so we'll, we'll actually overlay that when you look at the same kind of graph for a um, ceramic which we'll do in blue oh no fucking yes so we'll put I at steel there okay now I'll talk about organize it's all going to shit again uh, when you have something like a ceramic it basically goes up like this and snaps that's all that happens you hardly get any you don't get any plastic deformation it's like you can't bend glass unless you heat it up and make it malleable basically turn it back into almost like a liquid um, well you turn it into its plastic region but uh, you basically it basically hardly bends you, you get glass you can hardly bend it and then it snaps now when you have cross sections all the rest of this is how you can get glass fiber rods but that's cross section versus radius and all the rest of it and the types of glass they use but if you just get a sheet of glass you try and break it just cracks and that's what happens so if you had con rods and stuff like that that's what happened they just got fucking bang um so that's one of the problems with um ceramics and all the rest of it now we do use ceramics in engines so there's a thermal issue and then there's literally the mechanical properties of these materials um now we do use ceramics in engines we have a uh, nicosil nicosil coating which is uh, silicon carbide and because ceramics are so uh, stiff and because they are they're, they're hard this is why they don't want to deflect because they are hard the crystals are locked in there like motherfuckers unless it's glass we won't go into that um but uh yeah the crystals don't want to deform they usually have nowhere to deform to that's the other problem uh with ceramics and all the rest of it um but you look at Mohr's hardness and all the rest of it you've got uh where's steel normal steel is about a four so this is a hardness test this is a scratch test steel is about a four titanium is about six this is scratch resistance uh, titanium is about six what else does it say tungsten scrapped resistance is uh, 7.5 to 8 to 8 and then you get into your carbides and all the rest of it you know um, cubic zirconia uh, silicon nitride eights 8.5s uh, uh, tungsten carbide is a nine tungsten nitride which is the well weirdly enough it's that stuff on your fork that goldy looking stuff and on your piston uh, your caliper pistons for your brakes uh, titanium carbide that's 9.5 silicon carbide 9.5 again uh, which is your nicosil coating and diamond is a 10 you know what I mean so silicon carbide is a 9.5 so that's your nicosil coating diamond's a 10 you know this is way above these you know you get hardened steels it's about a 7 so yeah ceramics they're just they're, they are a different material and they do have their uses you know we use um tung uh, tungsten carbide for cutting tools because if you have a harder material basically the hardness of the material is how well it holds onto all its atoms so if you have all these atoms here 
and they're all locked together really nicely and they have a, a, a good um, bond basically between these atoms and they can hold an edge better so we use tungsten car carbide which is stiff as fuck and we've got that as a material tester sample we'll see that um, tungsten carbide shatters it breaks where steel will dull and round off and all the rest even hardened steel um, but yes yeah, so four engine components people just think ceramics and heat but they don't make turbine blades out of ceramics because they would shatter they'd be fucking terrible you know um, they've got okay creep resistance and all the rest of it and we'll go into all that means uh, another one but uh, it's also the way they fracture as well that's the problem uh, ceramics are generally even when you, you have to put them under tremendous pressure um, ceramics are usually quite porous as well which doesn't help crack propagation when you have fractures and stuff like that but yeah, uh, ceramics are good for heat, that's about it when it's concerned with engines. We don't really want to use them for anything else. Impact resistance uh, and all these kind of things, you know, like I said, they, generally they're just too hard and too brittle. We need some um, flex, we need some bending, we need some uh, malleability, even in all the things. You'd think you just want rigid, but the problem with rigid is, is that usually, especially um, shock propagation, and vibrations through things when they are very very hard they're more it's a shatter and crack and fatigue in different ways than metals are metals are a bit more forgiving that's why we use them because it is a violent in environment we can basically just tailor certain materials or dope them with alloys to be able to handle these temperatures um, just a bit better like i say the main thing is is that because they're um thermally insulators thermal insulators uh, you know, like your coffee, you pour a hot cup of coffee in there, it takes a long time for that cup to heat up, and then once your coffee's gone, it'll retain that heat for quite a long time. And because they're crap thermal conductors, your engine will just, it would start to run, and then it'd just start to detonate like a motherfucker, you know what I mean? To the point where it'd all go sh up shit creek, you know. Uh, aluminium is quite a soft metal in the, you know, as an element, as an element, uh, elemental metal, you know, compared to tungsten, stuff like titanium, nickel, um, cobalt, aluminium is quite a soft and quite, uh, it has quite a low melting temperature, this is why guys are doing backyard casting usually use aluminium. Um, and we still use aluminium because of its thermal properties, you know what I mean, and its rust resist, corrosion resistance to a degree and blah blah blah, but it's usually its thermal, um, it's thermal conductive properties, that's what we want. Radiators are made out of um, aluminium, your cylinder heads are made out of aluminium, your pistons made out of aluminium, lightweight as well. Obviously, there's loads of reasons, and people are going to say, ha, 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 Matt, you missed that bit. Look, there's a million reasons. What I'm trying to get across is the, the main reasons, or the simple points. The simple points to understand, and the simple points in the future to also show you as well, to basically point out why these things are like this we'll see this with the material tests i have uh, a toxic metal here this is beryllium copper this is going to be an entire video on this stuff because this stuff's fucking awesome and this stuff's a stiff as fuck as well um, but we're going to talk about beryllium copper valve seats and titanium valves and so on and so on and so on hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit